Welcome back in, guys, to Heated Shenanigans Podcast, hosted today by Colin and myself, Scott. And we are going to be breaking down and discussing the incredibly shocking news from Money in the Bank that the GOAT, John Cena, is going to be hanging up the boots in the not-too-distant future. We have a uh, kind of a timeline to work with for our remaining time with John Cena as an in-ring competitor. But before we get into all that, real quick, guys, just a reminder to please hit that like, share, and subscribe button. Drop a comment down below. Uh, today's fan question that we would like you guys to answer in the comments, favorite John Cena moment? Drop them in the comments below. Let us know what your favorite John Cena moment throughout his illustrious career has been. Well, Colin, I don't know if you had watched Money in the Bank last night, but we were treated, well, I wouldn't say treated, but we had one heck of a surprise, and that is John Cena, the doctor of thugonomics, the man we have watched literally his entire career, is calling it a career next year. Um, it is important to note that he is not retiring at WrestleMania. There is a lot of misinformation out there. He said this will be his last WrestleMania coming up in 2025. He'll have 30 to 40 dates. So, Colin, what? Uh, how, do, how do you feel about this? I mean, we'll see. <laughs> uh, we hear retirement all the time from wrestlers, and they are probably the worst about retiring. Um, I don't think... If he retires and pulls the Shawn Michaels and stays retired and doesn't come back at Saudi Arabia, none of that stuff ever happens, ever, I'm good with it. I mean, he, he's got other stuff he's got to do. He's making movies. You know, he's competing with The Rock for who has the most movies and not necessarily good movies, but movies. Um and, I think his time is, has come, uh, to be honest. I, I, I mean, could he still go? Sure. But, you know, you, you have so many, uh, you have so many bumps on your card and maybe he's just like, I'm cashing in early and, and leaving. Uh, he's been lucky not to have like any debilitating injuries, uh, throughout his career. He's had injuries, of course, um, that have taken, um, long periods of time to recover from, but he's not got something that, you know, puts him in a wheelchair, or, you know, sometimes you just got to protect your body long-term. So I, I'm cool with this. Well, I mean, John has nothing to prove to anybody. He has a un first ballot hall of fame career, 16 times the world champion. And we're going to get into that number here uh, and one of the upcoming topics. But I, I do want to say that, it's been a remarkable ride and we don't really know what's going to shape the retirement tour for John Cena, how it's going to go. There's a lot of options. There's a lot of young talent within the WWE that would really benefit from that John Cena rub and who could really launch their career uh, probably more than what Austin Theory has done with his John Cena victory. But Colin, I, I have my person in mind. Who do you think should have the final match with John Cena? Mm, man. Part of me wants to go Kurt Angle, but you know he's retired too. Just have a, a nice bookend um, to his career. Part of me wants to say like a, a, a Gunther, you know, um, somebody, uh, you know, of course. I love me some Gunther. Um, but I think Gunther's got enough uh, of a rub already. He's already pushed to that that level. Um, man, a Dom would be great. I think that'd Mysterio? be cool. Yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine how pissed people would be? <laughs> He's already, you know what? Look at it this way. He's already a heel. He's already massively hated. Think about how mad people were about who Kurt Angle had as his retirement match. Now imagine that on steroids <laughs> with Dom True. and Super Valley. 
I mean, you can go any uh, most members of the Judgment Day, I guess. Uh, Finn no. would be another decent one, but I I think Dom is probably the best. The, the, the I think he'd be the funniest bit, to be honest. I the rage people would have <laughs> if Dominic Mysterio was the final person to beat John Cena. I I man, I had gone back and forth with who I thought would be the best final opponent. Do you go the nostalgic route and give Randy Orton and John Cena one more time? Nobody really benefits from that. Nobody really needs that. Do you go with Gunther? No, I don't think he needs it, just like you said. Do you go with a possible Braun Breaker? I wouldn't be upset. Okay, I would not be upset if Braun was the guy. But I will say the guy that I think needs it the absolute most, if WWE is going to invest into a particular individual at the top of the card for the next five to 10 years, I think the only answer is Cody Rhodes. Because for the inception of WWE, there has been a guy at the top of the food chain that is the guy. Hogan was throughout the the 80s and the 90s austin got that spot right afterwards john cena picked it up roman reigns had it it is good it would be a passing of the torch john cena cody Rhodes. if that was the final match we ever saw for john cena in the wwe ring in the wwe what better way to pass the torch to the new generation to give it to the guy that I feel WWE is the most confident in leading the company going forward. This would th- this is the equivalent of, of getting Austin Hogan. This would be the equivalent of, of Goldberg and Austin in, in terms of star power and in terms of what it would mean for the WWE and Cody Rhodes going forward. Now, there's going to be some people out there that argue Cody doesn't need this match. He's already the world champion. He ended the greatest run in the modern era for professional wrestling when beating Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 40. But that's that's just one signature win to Cody's resume on his WWE run. Imagine what it would do to make Cody the face of the WWE to beat the prior face of the WWE. And I feel it would be a once in a lifetime match. And I would argue from a star power perspective, this match between John Cena and Cody would be bigger than Cody and Roman Reigns. Well, if you're going with current champions who could use a rub, I mean, Damian Priest could sure use it. <laughs> He'd probably forget to kick out. <laughs> uh, I like how your face, I mean, it went, no, no, don't even. I knew where you were going. Up. <laughs> Come on, yeah. oh man i yeah i could see it but i kind of i kind of agree that i don't think he needs it either um cody's good but i'd prefer somebody like lower down on the card that could use it um i'm not sure exactly who obviously dom is just for for shits and giggles it'd be funny as hell i don't know that I'll, i don't know that it would help him like I said, the last time we talked about Dom, I don't think he's, you know, going to be in that upper echelon of, of champions. So pushing, using Cena to push him doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, Cody, logically, if you want to put him in that Roman Reigns, you know, stone cold, you know, upper echelon of wrestlers, I guess. But I feel like you could go somewhere else with that at this point. Like if 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 Gunther doesn't need the rub, Ali neither does neither does Cody at this point. Then um, I feel like we could go somewhere else with it. Um, but I don't I don't really know who you would want at this point. Um, maybe you could have him be uh, a victim of the 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 Wyatt Six. That's a possibility to end his career out. I mean, he did have the thing with Bray um that's also a thought but who who would i mean do we trust bo dallas because i don't uh depends on how the storyline goes 
So that's an option. You know, I, 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 if we're going to use John Cena of all people to push somebody, I'd want a mid Carter, not somebody who's already up there. Um, your IC people, your, your U S champions, um, our <laughs> <are> truth. <laughs> Let him get his win. Let him get his W. I mean, I, I don't think you would, if he's got 40 to 50 appearances and he's going to be in a couple matches, absolutely. I'd have our truth beat him once. Just I, I, for that moment. I feel whenever the, the event is, that is going to be John's last match. Cause again, I'll reiterate here. It is not at WrestleMania 2025. That is going to be his last WrestleMania. That is not his last match. There is a difference. Maybe SummerSlam, maybe that might be when it's the end or Survivor Series of next year. But it does beg a very interesting question. We sit in a time where John Cena is tied with Ric Flair for 16 times the world champion. Records are meant to be broken. WWE has been in this era of breaking the older records. As we saw, a lot of the longtime title runs went down during Roman's reign. We also saw Gunther crush the Honky Tonk Man's Intercontinental title record. These records are coming down. Do they go after what is arguably the biggest accomplishment in professional wrestling? And at some point in the tour, John Cena becomes a 17-time world champion, the most in recognized WWE history. No, I don't think so. Um, Flair is in a Flair's in a different situation. Honky Tonk Man was, uh, I feel like, members of WWE, the upper uh, CEO people of, of WWE, didn't really want or care about honky tonk man having that record he's not no disrespect to honky tonk man of course but he's not somebody you really think of when you think wwe so i can kind of understand them being like i mean who's really gonna be upset by this um they didn't get the all-time record uh with roman reigns that was going to take half a century and nobody wanted to wait. Uh, okay. Nobody sane wanted to wait. Um, but who, who did he not pass? It was Hogan. And then it was uh, Bruno San Martino. That was it, right? That's the only two. I think there was, was one, there was one more, but it's, it's too late in the night and it's, I'm too tired to look it up <laughs> in the comments. Let us know who was it. Um, but to be honest, outside of Hogan, like Bruno, I think he has ha had a beef with Vince, but eh, and Vince is out now, so Triple H was going to let that happen. Hulk's got a plethora of, you know, extracurricular problems that, that came well, up that are, in the last couple of years. Well, the one recently that's mounting, but uh, go on. Yeah, that too. Um, so that's understandable. Uh, and I don't like Hogan anyway, so it's relevant. But Flair is so well respected overall, whereas you know you could look at at it slightly differently with uh, with Honky Tonk Man, Hogan, etc. Um, I just don't, see, and especially with his relationship with Triple H, uh, I don't I don't see there being a situation where Flair's record ends um, unless I I think Flair's given the go ahead to to have that record broken so you know you don't need that but I just don't see Triple H being remotely interested in breaking that record and, and honestly why Cena's in his last year anyways yeah sure I guess you could give him the title but do you really want to, you know, hot shot it around for like the next six to seven months? Um, taking it off of him, knowing full well he's going to be gone in a year. So, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, if you're going to do it, it needs to mean something, especially if you're just going to have him take it off of somebody. I, I understand that aspect of it, but I do. 
if you would have asked me this question 12 years ago, I'd have said, absolutely no way in hell John Cena doesn't deserve it. <laughs> but now that I'm wiser, <laughs> let John have it. it because here's, it, it's, here's the thing. If it's not John Cena, who's it going to be? Because the only other person that is close enough to enter this conversation is Randy Orton, who sits at 14 times the world champion. Randy could get it. He'd need to get hot shot to three, three runs. Cena needs one. And again, I, at some point, whether we see it or not, Flair's record is going to get broken. I've made peace with it. Uh, Rick Flair has been uh, outspoken on, on John being the guy to do it. Like he thinks John has earned the opportunity. And to be honest, like, I feel when we get to John's final match, right? When it's the final time we see John Cena. He deserves the biggest exit from the company possible. Whatever, whatever he wants, he has earned the right to go out on however, what terms he wants to go out on. This man rose to stardom at a time in WWE where there were very little stars, major players to be had. Was he shoved down our throats for the better part of a decade? Absolutely. But again, not entirely, looking back, not entirely John Cena's fault. But John has earned the right. And if in the next year or whatever, John Cena is to capture the 17th championship and pass Ric Flair, I don't see how you have a, I don't see how anybody has like a major problem with it. But if, if it happens, it happens. Um, Colin, as we wind down here, final question on this retirement tour, who are three people you want to see John Cena go against? Our truth automatically. I, I just, I think the gag would be funny. Um, I think he'd have an interesting uh, matchup with Cody Rhodes, so I wouldn't mind seeing it. Um, and then somebody from the mid-card. I don't have a name right off the top of my head that I can come up with, but somebody from the mid-card you can push, um, preferably the, towards the end, um, maybe have that as the last match. I, I, I don't – I'm not buying the Cody Rhodes being the, the final – uh, conqueror John Cena, just he doesn't need it. It's not worth it. Um, give it to somebody, you know, lower down the card. Don't waste this opportunity. You, it's you get one. Don't waste it on somebody who's already up there. He's already proven he can do it. Um, whether fans like his run or not, right now, um, he doesn't need this extra boost. It's not really going to do anything for him. Um. Three people I would like to see John go against. One is Cody Rhodes. I, I'd like to see that match. I think a Cody, I'm sorry, I think a Gunther and John Cena matchup would be one for the ages. And I think, depending on, like, assuming John Cena gets to go wherever John Cena wants, Raw, SmackDown, I would like to see Drew McIntyre and John Cena go one time in the ring. Where Now that Drew's where he's at. But again, we really kind of get let down with a lot of final matches within WWE. Um, Edge's final match felt very underwhelming. Um, but for God's sakes, they didn't even give it to us commercial free. So, I mean, kind of, I mean, I think they knew where he was going next. So they didn't really like, well, here, thank you, but eh, piss off. Angle was another one. Putrid final match should not have been against Baron Corbin. Should have been against John Cena. That was the that was the only correct answer for Angle and John Cena. Um, but we'll see. Um, it, it remains to to be shown to us who it's going to be. We got a ways away. I think for the the last however many months we have left with John Cena, just enjoy the time, enjoy the memories, the promos. I, he's one of a kind. He generationally great is John Cena. And we'll see what the future holds. Uh, Colin, before we wrap up here, did you have anything you would like to add in? Um, I mean, congrats to Cena on such a great career. It's 
been what 20 a little over 20 years um good luck with him in in uh, hollywood continuing uh his filmmaking career oh it's been a long ride so uh yeah good luck to him i'm uh, you know hope he enjoys wrestling retirement at least however long that lasts because in professional wrestling you're never retired yeah, that's true well guys that's gonna do it for this episode of heated shenanigans podcast we want to thank you for watching supporting and remember please hit that like share and subscribe button drop a comment below let us know what was your favorite john cena memory throughout his career and for colin and i we will see you on the next episode of heated shenanigans podcast guys